Welcome to the video, everybody. Uh, I just want to show you guys the workflow that I would normally go through for fixing up a Lumion scene. Um, this is my favorite Lumion uh, example scene. It's done by 10 over studio. Um, but the version that's in Lumion of it is quite frankly, kind of a mess. Um, you know, there's textures missing. There's a lot of like flickering faces. Um, as you could see uh, through the uh, video playing is that there's a lot of like flashing lights and things like that, which is caused by a couple of things, um, but they can mostly be cleaned up. So I just kind of want to show you guys just some of the things that I was doing, like changing the trees out for fine nature, uh, changing the asphalt to something that looks a little uh, more reflective. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. Um, you know, if uh, people really do enjoy kind of watching these kind of videos where I speed things up and just talk through things, I can make more of them. Um, this is kind of a new format. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Enjoy the video. very first thing that I'm going to look at changing is the asphalt. So the asphalt in this one is uh, taking up like a lot of space in the scene, except it's just like this flat gray material. So I'm going to make it something that has like a wetness to it. So we're going to get reflection planes kind of playing off of it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do is I want to look at changing the roof from just a white color to brick. If you're just doing it at street level, you wouldn't have to do this. But since there's actually a shot that's looking uh, kind of down at the building, uh, we do have to change it. Um, typically, I could actually, you know, go into the SketchUp file or whatever I made it in and change the material ID. But unfortunately, it's kind of locked to this, um, like th this material. So it kind of limits what I can do with it. The next thing I want to look at doing is changing all the trees on the road to find nature. Um, the, the trees that were used like I maybe I guess it would speed up render times, so but it was like they're like very uh, I guess like not high quality trees. So when you're that up close to them, I would recommend just using fine nature. Uh, in this particular case, I don't really care too too much about the extra render time that it includes because I think it adds a lot to the scene, uh, especially with the transparency. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go through and delete the trees, uh, and then I'm going to uh, place the fine nature trees in each one of the uh, little uh, the placeholders. Uh, and then the reason why I want to put the uh, fine nature in first is because I want to change all of them at once. And since it has very limited options for uh, copy and moving, um, I recommend you put all the trees in first so you can uh, select all of them in a box select and then start to adjust um, the colors that way. Um, I don't really like the fact you can't alt and move them, uh, but that's just the kind of the way it is. But I, since I want them all to look the same, this is the best way of going about doing that. This is the part that I was talking about with uh, box selecting everything. Now that they're all in, we can just um, box select everything and then we can adjust the uh, green selection hue uh, and also just the, I guess, the saturation so that we can make it match the original a little bit more. Um, I did want the trees to look the same because even though the leaves weren't very high quality, the other ones, I did actually like how they looked. So I was trying to keep um, that same effect, except we're just going to get a much um, nicer look in the final render using these fine nature. Now that we've got the tree set up in the way that we want, we're just going to go through and make sure that they're all sitting inside of the bars. Uh, I will speed this one up a little bit just because there's nothing really special about this. Um, it's just going to be me making sure that they're all kind of um, not going through too, too much. Like is, if the branches are kind of going through at one point, that's not a big deal. I just don't want the actual trunks to be going through because that'll be a lot more noticeable. What I'll often do just to kind of detect flickering faces before I actually render stuff out is I'll just go into the timeline for the video and I'll just slide it back and forth. And that's typically enough to actually pick up on some of the flickering faces. Like if you notice the uh, the black concrete around the base of the building. When I'm doing that, you can actually see that flickering. So that's one way that I detect um, where the flickering faces are. And this is really important to do because the thing that I always find stands out the most to me about someone uh, who's made a mistake in a Lumion like animation is the flickering faces. It's very easy to change in both SketchUp and also Lumion with flicker reduction. Um, so yeah, there's basically no excuse to have extremely bad flickering faces. There are some you can't really avoid with certain models in Lumion, which you're going to see later in the video. This is why I do think it's really helpful to render out like a draft version animation of even like two stars or something like that. Just so you get a better idea of uh, the flickering faces before you render out like a five star animation and have to do it all over again. So keep that in mind. Something I did think was really awesome about this scene is that for the interior lighting, they didn't actually use spotlights or any kind of Lumion lighting node. Uh, they actually just used a picture um, that looked like a lit up building. And then you can just make that emissive and it gives you a really, really nice effect. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really cool that they added this in. So we just need to adjust that a little bit. This is a pretty minor one, but I just wanted to adjust some of the gates, um, just because they were a little too, um, rough, I guess. Like I wanted them to be very glossy, especially when we're doing the pan in front of the building. Um, because I think that'll just give like a much nicer effect and maybe you'll get a little bit of reflections off of it. Um, and just kind of adds a little more visual interest to the scene. One of the biggest things I wanted to change about this clip is I really didn't like how it was like this, like foggy, almost like smoky effect that made it look like the, 
like the city was on fire or something like that. So I just wanted to change to a clear skies HDRI um, because that's the lighting I want. And I am going to be putting in a sphere a little bit later on, which will give us uh, a much nicer effect. Um, but yeah, this is the thing I think I just had to get rid of, even though it's not intent, like originally what they wanted. I just really didn't like it. So I decided to take some uh, artistic liberties with it. So hopefully that's not too bad. So I'm just going to go through here. Uh, I went to color correction, just turned down the temperature a little bit because I want it to be a little cooler. Uh, it was a little bit too warm for what I wanted. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and I'm going to adjust the reflection. So first I have to turn it back on because I normally try and work with it off because it does slow down the viewport so much with reflection planes on normal. Um, but yeah, I think that when I open it up, there's only two reflection planes. Um, but now we need one on the actual ground, which is why I want to use that wet asphalt, uh, because you're going to get really nice reflections off of that. And it's going to make uh, a lot more of the scene look colorful and not just um, this like gray asphalt material. So this is one that I think is extremely important to do. Once that one's good to go, um, it's pretty simple. We just basically need to go through and I'm going to copy every single clip to or every single effect to all the other clips. Uh, the reason being is that I think it just gets a little more complicated when you split them up. I could just put them into the entire movie, which I would normally do um, if it wasn't uh, already separated up into the clips. That's just going to fix all the move, all the reflections uh, and everything is good to go. So, yeah, not the most optimal, but I think it's going to work uh, pretty well here. So I think we've got to the point now that we can kind of uh, render out our first draft. Uh, I just did three stars about 30 FPS and it took me about an hour to render out. Uh, the reason I want to do three stars is I did want to have a little more detail in just one star so that things were a little more crisp. Uh, I could just kind of tell what's going on and then that's going to let me uh, just kind of adjust the scene up um, how I think it, it needs to be done. Um, I think the one that looks definitely the best is the one where it's panning down the building. You can really see the difference uh, in the original uh, example in the next uh, little clip here uh, compared to that one. So I think that that really uh, helped clean up the scene a lot. So I thought the animation was looking really good. I think we made um, a lot of progress up to this point. But the thing when I was watching through it that I just feel like was missing is almost like a hero shot of the building, like moving towards it. Um, you know, the other clips are almost like teasing those little parts of the building. Like, you know, here's like the walkway. Here's like the little restaurant area. But I feel like there's no uh, clip that was really just showing the entire building. Um, so that's one that I wanted to create. Nothing crazy, like eight seconds, just going from the off street corner, moving towards the building, kind of looking up at it, because that is how most people are going to be seeing the building. So if you're presenting this, you want to have it so that there's like a street level shot looking up and you can see like, you know, as people are walking by, um, this is how it's going to look. Um, so yeah, nothing crazy here, but this is kind of how I wanted to end the video, uh, sort of like the, uh, the finisher of the whole animation. There was a bunch of people, um, in the animation move that was just broken. So in my opinion, like, don't even worry about this, just remove them and like, don't waste time on trying to fix them. One of the main reasons for the flickering reflections in the beginning um, were that um, the reflection cube was on the ground and so the cars were driving through it and like th it was actually inside of the car so you're getting these really weird reflections. Um, so what I did is I just removed that one altogether, put my own in and then dragged it way up in the sky and while it's not perfect it fixes a lot of the problems. The other reason why there was a lot of flickering uh, is depth of field. In my opinion, uh, just get rid of it altogether. Like if, for these kind of scenes where it just has a tiny bit on, all it's going to do is make uh, the lights like, flicker weirdly. So yeah, just get rid of it. Next, we're just going to add some spotlights into the restaurant. I think there might have been some in there, but I removed them. So three ought to do the trick. Like we're basically just put them in. Uh, we're going to lower them to an amount that looks okay. And that way we're just going to get some lighting inside of the restaurant, but it's not going to like blow the whole scene out. Um, because if you don't put anything in there, it's just too dark. Um, and you know, you really want people to know that that is indeed a restaurant when you're showing uh, this in a presentation. I'm also just going to tweak the precipitation a little bit just to get that right amount of uh, rain on the ground. The rain just helps add, like I said, a lot of those reflections. So it is important you kind of adjust it. I rendered out another draft. So let's see how that is now compared to the first one.
So a trick that I do to actually get full uh, control over um, your sky is I actually uh, bring in an HDRI image and then that way uh, the image of my sky and my real sky's lighting can actually be separate and I can control both individually. Some of you may not notice, but all of the real skies inside of Lumion are actually uh, HDRIs from Polygon. So what I do in some cases, I'll just go and download an HDRI that I want to use uh, in Lumion from Polygon and then I'll get the image and then that way I, as I said I can actually separate the two of them out um, so it gives me more control like I can change the saturation I can change the brightness uh, while not affecting the actual lighting so I can kind of work on both of them at the same time and then not have to worry about getting uh, weird results. A pretty cool little trick with this too is maybe I'm wrong about this but it actually seems like you get better reflections with this because while doing this it's an actual model so Lumion will kind of treat it differently like I think if you have just a real skies in there it will not necessarily reflect in the same way as a sphere. Another little thing I wanted to add just to add a little more uh, flavor to the scene is I want to put a fine uh, nature bush right at the front of the final clip. Uh, the reason being is, I, as I've said before, like I think fine nature is probably the best feature of Lumion. Like they're, they're so well done. They're so optimized. Um, I really like using them. And I find that just having something like that kind of, you know, really puts you in the scene. So I want the camera to kind of go past it. Um, so what I'm going to do in this part here is I'm just going to put the bush in. I'm going to size it up how I want. And then I'm just going to, you know, set the camera up so that I am getting a little bit at the beginning. Um, and I think that it just, you know, helps kind of distract from other things in the scene. It's kind of like a sleight of hand trick. So I try and do that with a lot of uh, different scenes. I also want to include the image overlay so that when we render it out, it's going to be in the bottom left hand corner. Um, just a reminder, this is 10 over studios work. It was just a Lumion example scene. Um, but I think that's also good that we go to another draft here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to render out another um, copy of our uh, final animation with the old one over top of it, and we'll see how everything is turning out. So there's a few more small things I wanted to do. Uh, one of them is I just want to take the bricks, uh, make it a little bit blacker, so just a little bit darker to add some more contrast. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some uh, buildings kind of directly uh, in front of the building, um, just because that's just going to help kind of with the reflection so you don't see any horizon lines. Um, that's something I always pick up on when people put the reflection plane and it's like looking at nothing. Uh, just throw some buildings out there or even just a picture, something to just break up the reflection because people won't be able to tell. At this point, you can pretty much just change anything to kind of tweak it and how you want it to be. Um, I'm also going to throw on the poster uh, enhance mode or whatever it's called. It just helps clean up some of the lines in Lumion. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do is I think I didn't put it in this version, but just wind or something like that. So um, yeah, but that should be all of the effects uh, that you need to clean up this clip. I'm going to play my final animation twice here. Um, the first one's just going to have the overlay like the other ones. Uh, but what I just wanted to say, um, if you like this video, please leave a like uh, and a comment because it'll just let me know that people actually like this format and I can do more of them. Um, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button and also ring the bell. Um, it helps me with the YouTube algorithm and it also makes sure that you're here for future videos. Um, if you are subscribed, thank you very much um, for subscribing to the channel. It really motivates me to make more content. I hope you enjoy the animation.